<clears throat> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. And this is a brand new series that I have called Footy Unplugged. And this is the first episode. And it's basically a series where I'm going to be interviewing people in the industry from all over to get their insights into how they got started, what they've been doing, what they think is important for people who, like myself, want to try to break in. And of course, I had to start with one of my very good friends, <laughs> Olivia Aglo. So Liv, thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. I feel privileged to be the first um, the first episode. Yeah, I'm good. I'm trying not to think too much about the football right now. Um, <laughs> otherwise, if I, if I don't laugh, I'll cry. Uh, but no, yeah, I'm all good. Yeah, it's nice. I feel like I haven't like, seen you or spoke to you in ages. Like We used to do these all the time, didn't we? Like, FPL I know. Ones, so. I know it's been forever so I'm really excited to have you back on and we're like <laughs> accidentally twinning as well which is always <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get right into it um I kind of want to start at the beginning of your career um how did you get started like how did you begin working in football um so it's sort of like I obviously was at uni and I did like a degree that was quite general because I just wasn't quite sure like obviously like in your head you know what you want to do like obviously your dream is to work in football but obviously how many people get to actually do their dream jobs like not a lot of people um so when I came out of uni it was mainly like my dissertation so my dissertation I interviewed sports broadcasters because I did it on the equality of gender in sports broadcasting um and I interviewed a couple of people so a couple of people that work for Sky a couple of people that work for Premier League Productions and yeah through them they obviously I had never heard of Premier League Productions like today it's obviously way more well known but that was like six seven years ago for me and um yeah I, they basically just told me about it and they were like you know the best thing to do will be to apply just apply for an entry-level job like get your foot in the door and yeah so I did that I as soon as I got out of uni some jobs came up and I just applied for like the most entry-level role there was and um yeah it was my job was basically to sit and watch like hours and hours and hours of like slow-mo Premier League games and I had to like log everything that I saw um and I did that for a year did another job for a year did another job for a year so I was just I was still working in football but obviously like wasn't doing what I like my dream you know and then yeah then they gave me a presenter role so that was basically how I got my foot in the door was just people told me to like told me about this company and I just applied for a job and managed to get one and then yeah almost like just worked my way up started from the bottom you know I was I was gonna be like I was gonna say that and I was like no <laughs> you did anyway I, I'll be the one I'll be the one <laughs> that says it <laughs> and um I I actually started doing like the little bits that I used to do with Premier League because of you so I have mm. you to thank for that which oh you're really so special. welcome no you're great as well like I'm as soon as like, you said it, you know, as soon as I met as soon as I met you, I'm trying to think when the first time was it was it on Twitter? Like was that how we like connected yeah, like, years so. ago? Um well, five years ago now, which is Yeah, nice. and I oh god, that's oh my god, that's gone so quickly. Um but yeah, like I'm and I'll try always try and help people. If I think they're good and I can know they're like motivated and want to do it, then I'll always help and try and help whenever I can. So um it's just such a shame that like Premier League productions have sort of gone the way it has where there's not that many opportunities anymore um for like freelancers and for other for other people so yeah it's just a bit thingy but yeah yeah but yeah. so I know that you do like a lot of different things which is super cool so can you break down a little bit like the different types of roles that you do and what maybe a day-to-day -day would look like for you see this is the thing my days are always so different like I can't I like I can't I don't have like a specific day to day like genuinely I have never had one week unless like when I when I first started obviously like I was in like a staff role and obviously your days are very similar it's like any office job I suppose but obviously being freelance now like literally none of my weeks are the same but like if I was to take you so like my Premier League Fridays where I present in the studio uh with Andrew Mensa and Spoonie and we do that every Friday and it's a fun show so I'll I'll take you through my day for that because that's probably the most regular that happens every week without fail but that's like the only thing that happens every week um so I would basically get up obviously I get my hair and makeup done at work which is quite nice so I can just rock up I'll get out of bed shower go into work 
Um, and then we have like a little meeting before in the green room where our producer just sits with us and talks us through um, the show and everything we're doing. Um, AKA we basically just mess about for like an hour and a half, which we shouldn't be doing. And it takes us that long to get through the show because we just go off on all other angles and we end up like shouting and arguing and fighting about different things. Um, and then I go and sit in hair and makeup um, and then we'll go into the studio. I'll get like mic'd up and we'll do like rehearsals and we might pre-record the top of the show. Um, yeah, and then we record the show. They go, the good thing is like, I'm not in work or, like for like a long period of time. Mm -hmm. like, I get in on this day at like half nine and I'm done by one o'clock, which is quite nice. Yeah, so um, so yeah, we record the show and then yeah, that's us done. We have a little brief after, like just chat about what, what went well, what went badly. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. And I'd say the other sort of thing, like, you know, I do I do a lot of roles. I do, that's like presenting and then we do reporting and then I do reporting for boxing and it's quite different. But like at a Premier League game, my day can be quite, that's also something that like is regular because it's the same at every ground I go to. Um, so that would be a case of, you know, getting up, usually driving to the stadium. Um, the first thing I do is get my accreditation that obviously gets you, obviously you'll know what that is. That's obviously just the pass that basically gets you wherever you need to go in the stadium then what I'll do is I'll have a few things to do pre-match. So I'll go and sit in the press room usually, just like gather my thoughts, have some food. Then I'll go and stand and do a little scene setter about the game, just in front of a camera, me and a camera for about a minute. Then I'll write down the team news. We get the team news in a little app. I'll make sure I write down the changes, send that in a WhatsApp group. Um, and then I'll stand and do another hit about the team news and the changes they've made. Um, and then that's it. Watch the game and then write down what I do when I, but I don't actually... I don't think anyone's ever asked me this, like what I do during a game and like how I sort of keep my notes. And I used to just like write down the main points that has happened that have happened. Um, but now I do it in a way where I'm like, I write down the times as well. So like in the third minute, if Spurs have had a big chance or someone's made a big save or, you know, in the 26th minute, Reece James has been sent off or like on the fourth minute, no, maybe like the 44th minute, you know, uh, managers like made a sub that wasn't enforced or something like that. He's just made us up. So it's just easy to have that down on a bit of paper so that when you come to ask questions at the end, you've got everything down that you then want to talk mm -hmm. about, which I think is quite handy. Um, so that's what I'll do during a game and then after the game, ask post-match questions to the players and then, yeah, go home. So yeah, they're, they're the two things I would say that are quite regular in my in like in like my work schedule. Mm -hmm. They're the same. For every Friday is the same and every match day is the same. Um, so yeah, that's probably the two days. But apart from that, it's so different. <laughs> I think that's really fun though because you kind of get to change it up all the time and you don't yeah. like really know I, what's in store and so you never get bored you know yeah that's the one you know it has its pros and cons obviously like one of the pros is that yeah like my days are so different my weeks are so different my, my everything is just so different but on the other hand it you, I have no routine in my life like zero routine to like you know how people like need routine yeah I'm not so I'm not that not sort of person that like needs routine all the time, but like one day I'm up at four o'clock in the morning, the next I'm up at eight, then I have a line and I'm not I'm not up until like eleven, and then it's like it, it or and then I'm up at seven. So it's like my body, I would just always be tired because my body just can't ever get used to getting up so early or then having a lie in. Like it just yeah, so that's I mean, there's not many cons to it, but that's one of them, is that my body is just like it's constant I'm just constantly tired because I, I thought just, it was just me <laughs> yeah you know, I just because I like my body clock is just yeah so messed up now but so I'm just like yeah it is what it is um but yeah there's obviously way more pros than there are cons and yeah I'll, I'll never get bored that's that's one that's definitely one of the main things I don't think I could actually sit and do an office job now I think probably I'll have to go back to it at some point but like I don't know because I've, I've only been freelance like what a year and a half and it's like I can't really imagine what I can't, I can't even sort of think what it was like before. So well, I just went into the same office job and did that for like eight hours a day. But I know, uh, I, I'm, I'm so jealous. Like, I was still <laughs> in the office job, and I'm like, one day maybe. We'll see. Um, so kind of going into that, what would you say are like the key skills that maybe somebody would need to break in? I know that there's obviously a lot of different facets that you can work in football but maybe for specifically what you do like presenting reporting type of thing yeah um I'd say one of the main thing one of the hardest skills is obviously you have like a million people in your ear 
and -hmm. you've got to like filter out what you need to listen to what you don't need to listen to whilst also listening to the person that you're presenting with or who you're talking to but also making it look like you're not listening to Mm -hmm. anyone so it's like that's probably one of the hardest skills and I, I don't really think there's any way of like do you know it was really weird that I used to do yeah when I used to go out for dinner with people, and this is actually really rude when you think about it, but like, I would like, I would like look at them as if I'm talking to them, but I'd be listening to like the table next to me. So like I, they'd be talking to me and I'd be like nodding my head and looking at them, but actually I'm listening to the whole conversation of the table next to me. And I don't like, I, I didn't do it on purpose. I think I'm just quite a nosy person to be honest. Yes. But I think that probably helped like, because I'm sat there like you know what like you, you know you have to be able to listen to the person you have to be able yeah. to then respond like I'm not like completely blocking it out but like my main like source of like what I'm listening to is coming from a different place but I think that's probably quite a good thing in terms of what I now do for a job because I do have to listen to what's going on over there in my ear with, whilst also having a conversation with someone so I think that's probably helped I think it's just me being nosy is probably just like actually helped me in but, work but That's one of the main skills, I would say. Obviously, there's a lot like, you know, I think confidence is a big one. Um, And like calmness under pressure as well. Like Mm. when you hear a count in your ear and you're like, oh, my God, I've got 10 seconds to have to stop talking. What's going to come out of my mouth in the next 10 (laughs) seconds? Um, So, yeah, there's a lot of things, obviously. But I think they're some of the some of the biggest ones. I've only done the like speaking in your ear once and it was like with an auto cue so you have like the auto Mm -hmm. cue and you're reading the auto cue and then some points you had to improvise and then you have the person in your ear and they're telling you like stand here and look at this camera and I was freaking out like it's so so much harder than it looks and I was like I mean like better at this like (laughs) it's not like I I can actively practice it sky sports did put up like a really cool thing on their socials it was a while back but it was like this is what you know you're looking at the screen and you can just see two presenters talking to the camera um but this is what they're hearing and people are like oh my god what on earth because obviously like when you watch it it's just normal like people just do you know i mean that's that's all it is like you're just watching two presenters as if they're just talking to the camera but um yeah like obviously then the audience heard everything that was going on in their ear and they were like what so obviously like it is like when you watch people you're like oh yeah fair play because obviously you know what's going on the other side of the camera that other people don't have a clue about so yeah I think it was quite cool for people to actually hear what happens in our ear whilst we're on tv yeah it's so difficult it's so so difficult Mm. would you say that there's anything that you can do to prepare for that other than like kind of listening to other people is it you kind of get thrown into it hope it goes okay and then get used to it yeah I I can't really remember the first time like I think it's a case of just being like chucked in the deep end to be honest because I don't there's nothing really in life that could ever that you could do that that I think could ever prepare you for something like that for like having someone in your ear talking to you whilst you're also talking to someone else like there's nothing that you could do and I'm obviously when I when I started doing like the little FPL updates, I did have people in my ear there, but they're not necessarily talking to me because I just had like a two minute straight read and I didn't really have to listen that much. Yeah. Um, whereas when you're doing live TV, obviously that's where you have to listen. So, and they basically just chucked me in one day. They were like, Liv, you're doing fan zone, right? And I was like, oh God, okay. Um, and that's where I had like producers, directors, everyone in my ear that I had to listen to. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah I think it's just a case of of once you do it and you do it it's the same with anything I suppose like practice makes perfect but I don't think there's anything you could do like on your own that could prepare you for that I think it's just a case of like doing it and hoping that you're actually all right and trying not to like even now I'm like if my producer tells me something and I I might like laugh just like randomly and I sort of forget that like like, no one else can hear what they're saying um But obviously I just got better at it and now it's like normal like I couldn't like I panic when I can't hear them do you know what I mean that's when I that's when like my, my earpiece went dead on uh on Friday um during our live show and I was like boys you're gonna have to like tell me what's coming next because I don't even know what's coming next like obviously I have it on an iPad but obviously your producer is the one that tells you effectively um and I felt more scared without anyone in my ear do you know what I mean that's that that's where the panic comes yeah. in I'm like why can't I hear anyone someone talk to me 
Um, and it got I sorted think. in the end. But yeah, like because I've been doing it for a while now, it feels way more normal having people in my ear. That's my like comfort blanket, having people there um, rather than not. So yeah. I guess you get used to like multitasking and like yeah. listening to people, but then speaking. <laughs> kind of trying to take in what other people are saying but I imagine that's so freaking difficult like it is hard like, I think because like yeah like, I've never really thought about it but like I imagine if like my my, my dad he always makes jokes like oh I could read also cue yeah I'll just sit there and read and I'm like bet you couldn't like you would try and sit there with the camera lights and pee about 50,000 people in your ear and then tell me that I, like, I'm rubbish at my job do you know what I mean <laughs> I think you will underestimate how hard it is because we make it look like people make it look easy I say we make it yeah. easy like do you know what totally. I mean like I think yeah I think totally like, but I think like so when you're good at something you just make it look seamless and I think even about I've listened to press conferences where you're asking questions and I'm like that's such a brilliant question and I remember I think it was a couple of years ago that you were even like one of the last people to ask questions which could be more difficult because you have to make sure that you have all the questions prepared that nobody else is going to ask and you just make it look so easy like the types of questions that you're asking and making sure that it's informative that it's interesting um I don't know I just think like you're so good at your job and you make it look easy um oh, thanks yeah I, I you know there's there's like people I look at and I think oh my god like you know I'd love to be as good at, at as good at my job as you are at yours and like um it's just I think it's just practice again I think it's just that's that's mm -hmm. all it is is just like I think sometimes it's easy to like overthink things like especially when you're like asking like post-match questions like you know I'll always go into a presser I can't really do presses anymore which is really annoying because they're all practically on a Friday and I don't come off air till one last season it was 12 so I had time to get to Cobham and I had time to get to Arsenal's training ground but there was no um now I can't I've only got half an hour so I, I just it's impossible but like even when going into a press I always make sure like I ask questions that I think people would want the answers to and just not like something stupid but post-match I think sometimes it's easy to like overthink you know you're watching a game and you're thinking oh is this too boring to ask this or is this but actually it's not like you've got to ask the managers the basics you know why did you make that sub do you think you made that stuff too early? And like just basic stuff like that that you would think when you're watching a game, but sometimes it's hard to overthink and be like, oh, maybe that's a bit boring. Like, or should I ask, you know, why, why, why did you struggle to create any to create, you know, any chances in that first half and stuff like that? So I think it is sometimes it can be hard, even for me. Like sometimes I do sit there and overthink, but I think sometimes it's just like keep it basic. That's the best way to be, is to just yeah. go with what you know and just keep it simple. Don't try and like overcomplicate things. So kind of Going into that, have you ever had any like awkward or embarrassing interview moments where you ask something and maybe the manager just completely shuts it down or I don't know, like anything like that? I haven't really. I'm always so conscious. Like, I did Pep's press conference and I know sometimes he can be like a little bit funny and same with Klopp. And I've yeah. done it twice and I, I made sure to ask like the most boring simple questions because I was like I don't want a sarcastic response I just that is the worst thing ever and I remember Pep said like Olivia and I was like oh my god he said my name <laughs> I had one once yeah with Roy Hodgson and it was about a it was when he was Watford manager I think and was it Watford was he a Watford manager I feel like it was Watford anyway I asked him a question he was like well I don't agree with you and I was like oh because <laughs> I just like I don't want it. I don't want to be controversial. Like we're not there for like Sky or like Talk Sport, who are actively after like a headline. I'm just there. I'm just there to you know, like just we're like a safe space for the Premier League. This is the thing for the Premier League clubs, Premier League productions, and this is who I do majority of work for, especially you know, with players. Um, we we're like a safe space, so we're not there. Like so, that's why I just try and keep it simple as much as possible because the last thing I want is for like a Premier League player or a manager to respond in like a bad way. Like I remember one of my mates, he said something on Sky about Wilfred Zaha. Um, and we, it was on one of the transfer shows we were doing. And then Wilfred Zaha like quote tweeted the tweet that Sky Sports put out and like went on a, like a rant about Nabade. And I was like, oh no, no, no. Like I just like, that to me is my worst nightmare. That is the last thing I want. It's like a Premier League player or manager calling me out. Um, for stuff like that so um yeah I try and keep it so I'm trying to think of like any other awkward 
I haven't had that many. Uh, anything like funny, like, or maybe just like, what, what's maybe been like the most fun that you've had interviewing or like any shoot that you've done as well? Uh, I always say the Havertz one because that's like still to this day is like one of the <laughs> <best> <laughs> <ones>. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. No, I honestly, like, you know me, I would have literally done the same thing, if not yeah. more, because I'm just like that. <laughs> Oh God, so for me, I was like, this is my day. sweet person right now. <laughs> oh God, it was quite funny. It was funny to be fair, it was funny. Um, I'm trying to think what other like funny, funny shoots I've done. Um ones where like, I haven't been able to like stop laughing. Honestly, I like rem- I like my memory so bad. Like when I try to think back, like I genuinely have to like go on Instagram and like look at like what I've posted and think what was really fun. Oh, do you know what was good? What? Um, I haven't posted it, and I hope I'm going to be able to post it because Everton are black, back winning again. But I did a shoot with Amadou Anana on his like fashion, and that was really funny. We had a great time, um, and that was something different as well. Um, Did you do one with Aspie with like puppies or something? Oh my god, yes! So basically, that was also very fun. That was with Chelsea rather than Premier League stuff, and um, we, yeah, we. <laughs> So it was him and Maram Yelda, and they basically love dogs. So we took their dogs around a dog agility course. It was so fun. I literally was like, sat, stood there, like, how is this work? Like, they're just running their own dogs. So they did it with like trained dogs, and then they did it with, um, like, with like their own dogs, and it was brilliant. Like, we had such a laugh. And also, another one is when I played Jenga with Declan Rice and Jared Bowen. That was really, really fun. Like, it's just because they're both great personalities, and together they were just amazing. Like, Declan Rice, you could do whatever with Declan Rice, and he's he's just 10 out of 10 at all times. Probably my favorite player to work with, or at least one of, because he's just, you know, exactly what you're going to get with him. Um, and he's great. And that was so fun. Like there was a, like in between us memes, uh, in between us like quotes and like we were just like taking the mick out of each other. It was just a really, really fun shoot. So they're just like a few of a few of the things um, that so I've cool. done. I would also say, actually, this is, this is so funny um, is when I did uh, Lion's Den, the episode with Mace and it was obviously with kids. And obviously when you put kids in any situation, they're just hilarious. Um, <laughs> And this young kid was like, oh, by the way, uh, Mason, my cousin really fancies you. This is her name. <laughs> we, we were all just like, oh, God. He was like, yeah, my cousin Sienna really fancies you. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> also, that was really funny. You know, it's fun to be. I, I always say to myself, like, showing off my personality and doing fun stuff is what I pref- what I enjoy most. Yeah. Like, I think obviously it's good to show I can be a serious broadcaster and I think I've done that you know I've worked for Sky Sports News you know and there is an element of fun to that definitely but like at the end of the day you are working for Sky Sports News you're there to provide news and but I always say like the one thing I enjoy most is when I'm able to laugh and have a good time and I can do I can do exactly that so I'm very lucky (laughs) oh that's really sweet (laughs) (laughs) um so kind of wrapping this up what would you say or what advice would you give to anybody who's trying to break into the industry um I think um I actually was thinking about this earlier and I actually when you when you were telling me like the topics I actually had a good bit of advice now I can't remember what (laughs) um no I would say like I would say YouTube is probably a good way to go because I think back when I was starting YouTubers in the football industry weren't really a thing but now more and more people or just maybe just like using your own initiative to set up something of your own um because I think that shows like that you've done something off your own back you don't need anyone else there and obviously it's a lot of work and I think people will um will take that into account. They'll be like, yeah, fair. Like she or he's really hardworking and and they've done this by themselves. Like look what they've created. You know, a lot of time and effort's gone into that. You know, I, and I know this is like a boring and a really cliche one, but like don't don't ever like take a no as like it's never going to happen because like mm. I even, ha- I still have that. Like I, I was meant to go out to Qatar for six weeks and then it got thingied at the last minute. And I was like, oh, that's really, like, you know, that's, I was gutted. Like, you know, you want to work at a major tournament. And, like, so stuff like that happens. It happens to the best of us. You know, you go for a job and someone else gets it over you. 
it happened um the other day i did the boxing for a couple of shows and then they went with someone else which is fine like you know sometimes they sometimes they just prefer someone else and that doesn't mean you're not good at your job do you know what i mean um sometimes companies are just looking for other things and you know i you know they they went with so i did a couple of anti i did an anti joshua show then another show then then this girl's done a couple and this other woman's done a couple and now i'm i'm going out to saudi arabia to do the anthony joshua fight for them again so it's like you know, there's, it's not like they they don't like you. It's not like, but sometimes they're just looking for other things, but the opportunities are still there from mm -hmm. other people. And maybe companies just like fancy someone else for a certain show, but fancy you for another show. So I think it just depends really. Um, but yeah, I still get told no and I still get opportunities. I'm like, I go for and that don't work out. And it's like, you know, it's, it's okay. And I think trying to use your own initiative to sort of get ahead of the game and to be consistent with it as well. I think that's the one thing. Or, you know, I know it's hard, but like, growing social media now is, is a great way to do it and trying to, but I'm so bad at that. But I mean, I it sounds ridiculous coming from someone that doesn't attempt to grow their social media because you need to post regularly. And I just don't, I'm not someone that I'm like, it doesn't come naturally to me to just get out and like to ask, to, to ask someone to take a picture. And my agent's always like, just take pictures wherever you go. Just get a picture of yourself at work. I don't care what it is, just do it. But that doesn't come naturally to me. And I find that quite hard. But again, it's the way the world's going that brands want to work with people that have a bigger social media platform and stuff like that. So I know it's hard, but trying to be consistent with it, I think is probably a good piece of advice. And also don't let idiots like Joe Barton um, um, affect you at all because people are, I think women are in this industry for a reason. You know, we're good at our jobs and, I'm sure there's people out there that think some men aren't good at their jobs, but they're still on screen. So it works both ways. It's not just a female thing. It's not just a woman thing. And yeah, don't let people like that affect you um, and tell you you can't do something because you can. I'm like on the point of tears. I it's felt like, like, <laughs> my soul, honestly, like I felt like you were talking. I know that I'm like here with you, but I felt that you were talking directly to me, but also to everybody. And I just like really felt that. And yeah, I think it's just because like, you know. I know like how many young girls, I get messages every single day that I can't, I can't reply to everyone. Um, But I get messages every single day from people being like, that's why I try and go and like, TikTok live because then people can actually just come in and ask me a question and I can answer it there and then um but people I get messages from girls even even boys as well I get messages from everyone just asking like you know what can I do to get into the industry any tips any advice and I just don't want people to be put off by some idiot who's irrelevant thinking that and he's only doing it now to try and be relevant because he just realizes he's just got like there's absolutely no one talking about him but now everyone's talking about him it's really annoying but I don't want people to be put off by someone like that saying that women can't work in football because we work in football because we love football and we've watched football from a, such a young age. You know, we love analysing it. We love, I mean, we've worked hard to get to where we are. So it's just annoying that people come out and think they have a right to be like, oh, women shouldn't be commenting on the male game. I'm here uh, commenting on the male game because I, I've, I've been watching it for years. You know, I've, I've studied for it and, you know, I'm here for a reason. So it's just irritating, you know. No, absolutely. It just like is, well, I was going to say irritating that... Mm -hmm we're still experiencing this, <laughs> in this and that's coming from like a premier league player as well like someone that's like a, do you know what i mean like, like you don't need that you yeah, just don't need it again it's just because he's irrelevant and he's just trying himself trying to make himself relevant again that's all i put it down to <laughs> well on that note we've been chatting for almost half an hour which uh, is just because we haven't chatted in ages <laughs> um so Liv, thank you so freaking much for this amazing interview, for just being your genuine self. I love chatting with you, like, and yeah. you're the best. So thank oh, you. Oh, so thanks. No, it's been fun. I I hope, you know, you'll get some cool people on this that are probably way, way cooler than I am. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, you'll get some wicked guests. And um, no, it's, a, it's been a privilege to be the first one. And I hope hope people enjoy it and will continue to watch the new series <laughs> thank you so guys if you liked this video make sure to check out the channel we're going to be hopefully dropping a new episode every week and sub and yeah i'll put all of olivia's socials down in the comments but you're probably already following her <laughs> <laughs> so hope that you guys have a great rest of your day evening whatever time you're watching this and until next time i'm out bye